Sushruta for Neat is now available on the Google Play Store. Try it out for free. So we shall start with the chapter what is called Strategies for Enhancement in Food Production. My dear students, in this chapter, I am giving you a lot of other information which is not mentioned in your study book, but frequently asked in the competitive exams. So, today's lecture, I shall put it in Google Meet again later in the classroom, Google Classroom, entire lecture. So, you need not to take down the points, but to listen to the lecture carefully, and I am going to put some questions in between. Right? With the ever increasing population of the world, enhancement of food production is a major necessity. You know, everyone has to eat the food. We eat food to live, or we live to eat food. Navya, what is your answer? You eat food to live, or you live to eat food? Pratvi, yeah, come on. Navya? We eat you food live, to live. You live to eat food? No. No. We eat food to live. So, at uh, the time when population is increasing every day by day, the food production also should increase at the same rate. Biological principles as applied to animal husbandry and plant breeding have a major role in our efforts to increase food production. How we increase our food pressure? By applying biological knowledge in the field of animal husbandry and plant breeding. Several new techniques like embryo transfer technology and a tissue culture technique are going to play a important role, what is a pivotal role in further enhancing food production. Not only that animal husbandry and plant breeding. We are going to study this animal husbandry and plant breeding one by one separately. Apart from these two, animal husbandry and plant breeding, there are several new techniques which are also involved in enhancing food production. And these new techniques involve or include embryo transfer technology. We shall see what exactly it is tissue culture techniques. So all these, animal husbandry, plant breeding, embryo transfer technology, tissue culture, all these are enabling us to increase or enhance the food production. Now let us take up animal husbandry. Animal husbandry is the agricultural practice of breeding and raising livestock. Animal husbandry deals with the agriculture practice of breeding and raising livestock. Now the question is, always ask a common question. What is livestock? I shall tell you the answer for this. As such, breeding and raising the livestock are a vital skill for farmers and is as much a science as it is art. Animal has been deals with the care and breeding of livestock like our livestock includes whatever animals we rear and we breed back at our home. That is, it includes that uh, buffaloes, cows, pigs, horses, cattle, sheep, camels, goats, etc. etc. that are useful to humans. 
So whenever you are asked, what are the livestock or what is the livestock? Livestock includes a set of animals which are reared at houses for our benefit and for the purpose of breeding. In addition to these animals, which I have cited, we also include in this animal husbandry poultry and also fisheries. So both of these are involved in animal husbandry in general. Fisheries include rearing, catching, selling, etc. fish. So many times when you say about fisheries, what you may think? You are going in a boat, spread the net in a sort of sea, in the river or sea, and catch the fish. That is what catching of the fish. Or catch the fish. You may rear the fish. So fishes in goods, rearing of fishes, or catching of fishes. Whatever you do, we do it for using the fishes for our own purpose as food or for selling. All these come under fisheries and fishes also include molasses. I shall tell you later. Fisheries is of two types. Fin fisheries and shell fisheries. Fin fisheries is actual rearing and catching of the actual fishes. It is called fin fisheries, whereas shell fisheries includes the rearing or collection of the molasses. Molasses are always called shell fishes, and included with that are the crustaceans like prawns, crabs, lobsters, etc. So, fisheries is mainly of two types fin fisheries, which includes dealing with actual fishes and shell fisheries which includes dealing with the molasses, crustaceans, etc. Since the time immemorial, animals like bees, silkworms, prawns, crabs, fishes, birds, pigs, cattle, sheep and camels have been used by humans for products like milk, eggs, meat, wool, silk, honey, etc. So, in this set of animals, which are used, which are all used for milk? Can anyone tell me? In this set of animals, which animals are used for milk? Come on. Can you answer Janani? Cattle, sheep, camels. Cattle, sheep, camels. Of course, you know that we don't go for uh, pig milk. Right? Yes. Cattle, sheep, camels are used for milk. And you know, birds are used for eggs. Pigs. Used for meat. Of course, cattle also sometimes. Sheep is used for wool. Silk or is used for silk. Bees are used for honey, right? I hope you have understood this introduction part, right? Now, okay. Question two, Blessy. Blessy. Blessy, yeah. unmute yourself. Yeah, please answer my question. Yes, sir. What are the two types of fisheries? What are the two types of fisheries? Come on. Sir? Come on. Can you start? What are the two types of fishes? Basic, I said just now, two types of fisheries. Can you start? Rearing, Aisha. catching. No, come on, come on, can you start? And no, what did I say? Just now I said uh, basic two types of fishes. You are right, but what I said I want. 
who will tell me your sim fisher is sim fisher sim and sim fisher ಫಿಶರಿ <laughs> how many of you are ready to do it please raise your hand because this addition information i am giving and it is important and most of the things are new to you come on would you please do it yes, hello sir. chinmay rafa vesvita yes, nadira siddesh harshavardhan janani jyoti jayasri tavita rohit yes, vishwas sir. ಹರ್ಷವರ್ಧನ್ರಿಯರ್ಮಿ ಪ್ರಬಲೆ and this point you find very interesting i know and this is very important you can easily remember the moment you listen my lecture properly don't simply keep your system on and move out you should there in your seat only don't go now and then to washroom and all whenever i ask you question immediately you should answer my question okay right shall i continue yes sir okay now let me just take up the next one what is that what is this can you tell me what are this come on quick unmute yourself tell me what are this shells shells shell. see this what type of shell these are commonly called commonly called sea water mussel they are commonly called sea water mussel what is that sea water mussel it is not mussel it is mussel m u s s e l have you heard about that sea water mussel there are two types of mussel sea water mussel and uh, fresh water mussel Vishwita, Vishwita. Yes, sir. Koyal gotunda. Ha, sir. Koyalo. Undo koyal. Yes, sir. Koyalo, koyalo, koyalo. Is in a tulu. Vishwita knows a tulu very much. Namia, koyal gotunda. Yes, sir. Yeah, koyalo is very delicious. It is available. in both the sea shore as well as in the fresh water rivers okay this is what you have okay then this is the same thing another type of mussel sea water mussel they all are useful and in one of the uh, studies when i used to go to the sea shore every day i used to encounter these in thousands local uh, uh, women folk used to collect them just i asked them with curiosity what are you doing how you do vishwita what we do is it that we eat everything no vishwita. sir no you remove the shell throw it and do you cut the elemental canal yes sir what are you doing vishwita how you do how you prepare the food <laughs> sir we remove that outer shell yeah then you squeeze out you, you don't squeeze out its rectal part to squeeze out to the uh, fecal matter then yes, you put sir. this uh, you put this masala kara uh, salt and all it is a fry and i learned that it's quite tasteful am i right vishmita yes sir yeah you can tell your mom also okay we have studied today koyolo okay 
So this is what here. See what the muscle. And this is what is there inside. Inside this uh, muscle. Okay. So you can see here. Eh? This is the Navya. Yes, Nadira. Nadira. Have you not yes, tasted sir. this? Yes, sir. Asia. Can you, sir? It yes, is sir. very common. It is very common in coastal bed. Even in Goa. In all these places, it is very common. Okay? It is with all the shellfish masala curry. Amaranth leaves are put there. Okay? Even the strict vegetarian, once they taste, they may not uh, follow strictly vegetarian food. And this is what you have. Crabs, lobsters. Okay? These are all examples for fin fishery or shell fishery. Fin fishery or shell fishery? Shell fishery. Shell fishery. Shell fisheries, all very tasteful, delicious food. I wonder what is this? Vishwita? Vishwita? Yes, sir. Have yes, you heard about Yeti? Yes, Yeti? sir. Yeti? Yeah? Yes. Yeti. Yes. This is Kanisa. What is it called? What is it called? Shrimps. Shrimp. Or it is also called Prawns. prawn. Prawn shrimp. You know, let me tell you one incident. Shall I tell you? In 1976, when I was a student of MSc, I was a student of fisheries biology, we were taken to Mangalore Fisheries College. Navya, we were taken to Mangalore Fisheries College. And we had a dinner and a lunch. Uh, post lunch, we had a session. Uh, during the lunch period, we were served separately. Vegetarian food, one particular side. Non-vegetarian food, another side. Okay. And uh, what he saw now, because this uh, puppet, it was in a shortage. Someone went to the non-veg side and brought some puppet and put here this side. And uh, we ate that very nice puppet. And post lunch session, the lecturer told the use of this uh, prawn or the shrimp and all. These are actually dried, powdered, and this uh, powder of this uh, prawns were mixed with the wood dal powder. Wood dal, you know what is wood dal? Wood dal. And wood dal is used for what purpose? Anything you know? Wood dal. Black gram. You know why it is used? Black gram is extensively used in preparing wood dal puppet. That lecturer told, see, we are mixing this uh, prawn powder with the wood dal powder, and if at all they are mixed and the puppet is prepared, it will taste like anything. All of us then realized what the puppet we liked very much and we ate more. It was a it was a Mixture of wood dal, wood dal, and prawn powder. So even prawns are used in preparation for pickles also. Is it true, Kanisa, Aisha, Blessy? Is it used in pickle preparation? No idea? I've heard of it, sir. Okay. So anyhow, so in this way, we use it. These are all examples for shellfish. It is estimated that more than 70% of the world livestock population is in India and China. So, China and India, they are not great countries with the human population. We are also great with regard to livestock population. However, it is surprising to see that, to note that, to know that the contribution to the world farm produce is only 25%. That is, the productivity per unit is very low. In spite of having more than 70% of world livestock population, I am not telling about human population. I am telling about the livestock population. Our production by this livestock is less than 25%. That means, for the namesake, we have livestock. These animals, cattle, buffalo, pig, camel, etc., etc., but what we get from this are very, very low. Hence, in addition to conventional practices of animal breeding and care, 
Conventional practice means the method or method are followed from age old practices. So, hence, in addition to conventional practices, usual routine procedure practice which was followed by our elders and sisters, newer technologies also have to be applied to achieve improvement in quality and productivity. Okay, now let us see that. Management of farms and farm animals. Right? Are you hearing me properly? Right? Yes, sir. A professional approach to what have been traditional practices of a farm management gives the much needed boost to our food production. A professional approach. Earlier, most of these farm animals were just reared just as a side business because one has to do some agriculture because he wanted some uh, that uh, manure. He used to rear some of these cattle without giving much importance to that. Now, a professional approach started. That means the people started rearing this cattle or rearing this cow, buffalo, then a sheep, goat, etc. for a particular purpose. And they used to do each and everything, whatever it is required in getting better aid. Let us discuss some of the management procedures employed in various uh, animal farm system. First, we shall take up diary farm management. I hope you know what is a diary. So look into the diary, spelling D-A-I-R-Y. What? Not a diary. D-I-A-R-Y. What is that a diary? What is that a diary? Whatever I'm asking you to do. Diary writing, diary writing. Okay. Now, you know, uh, please remember my dear students. Some of the students are writing the diary and submitting me every day. I request all of you, all of you, start following that so that I can know where your commitment take, what you are doing extra, how you can save the time, and how you can better use the time for a said purpose. Would you please start submitting that from, right from today? I want every one of you to submit me every day before going to bed. Good night, sir. This is my today's diary. There are many students who are submitting the diary. I request all of you to submit the diary. I want at what time you are going to bed. Uh, do you wish me to put a, a model diary? Yes, sir. You want it? Yes. So my, my concern is that, please remember my dear students, we are following you till you write a neat city. Do you want us to follow you, to support you, till you write the NEET exam? If at all you want, if at all you want. Is it not that whatever important questions I asked on the other day, most of the questions have come in your midterm exam? Can you say? Yes. Aisha? Yes, you. sir. Jyoti? Yes. So we will support you. And yes, I request you. Please keep me and this uh, diary we will discuss and you see that what best you, you have to do to score better marks in the examination. Please remember this uh, Sunday you don't have any exam, but uh, next Sunday you have the exam. Next Sunday you have. This uh, Sunday, coming Sunday you don't have, but uh, next Sunday it is cumulative. All the topics, whatever we have taught, uh, it will be included. Prior to that, we shall uh, solve as much MCQs as possible. So before I forget, I shall take an addition class on Saturday uh, or a Sunday, uh, Friday and Saturday or on both the days. Now, please let me know which MCQs we have to discuss on that day. Which one is pending? Come on, quick. Which one is pending? Prati, Namrata, Jyoti. Which one is pending? Rakesh? Human health, Human health and evolution. Human health and disease. Uh, before, prior to that, everything we have discussed, sir? Have yes, we discussed all other questions, MCQs? Hello? Hello, Rakesh, you please answer my question. Yes, Prati. sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, human health and diseases, let me take up on coming a Friday or a Saturday classes. Okay? So, please be ready. Now, coming back here, dairying is the management of animals for milk and it's a product for human consumption. It is mainly for milk and its products. What do you mean by the its products? What is the products? Come on. Jiti, what are the products? 
Hello. Yes, sir. What are the milk? What are the milk products? Milk, cheese, cheese, butter. Milk is milk. Milk products. You are all the dairy products. Ghee, curds, cheese. Am I right? Okay. What are different kinds of products that can be made with milk from a dairy farm? In dairy management, we deal with processes and systems that increase yield and improve quality of milk. So dairy management is mainly concerned with these two. What is that? One, increase in the yield of milk. Second, increase in the quality or improvement in the quality of milk. These are the two things that is mainly concerned with the dairy management. Increase yield and improvement of quality of milk. Milk yield is primarily dependent on the quality of breeds in a farm. You know, there are different breeds in a cattle. All different breeds, they will not give the same type of milk. Different breeds give different quality of milk. Can anyone tell me what is the difference between buffalo milk and cow milk? Who will tell? What is the difference between buffalo milk and cow milk? Sarvottam, can you tell me? What is the difference between buffalo milk, Harshavardhan, Siddhesh? Can anyone tell me what is the difference between the buffalo milk and cow milk? Charan. Kavita, Siddhesh, you don't know the difference between the buffalo milk and uh, cow milk? Who will tell me? Sarvottam, are you hearing me? Please, either you tell yes or you don't know. Anyone, please tell me, oh, what is the difference between the cow milk and buffalo milk? Did you taste them? Lohi, yes, come on, tell me. Well, who, who is telling me the difference? Come on. Have you tasted that? Have you tasted them? You know what? Sir, uh, cow milk will be very fat. Sir. Buffalo milk will be very fat, sir. Yeah. Buffalo milk is always thick. It is more fat than cow milk. Okay. Cow milk compared to less, uh, less fat. Anyhow, so I shall uh, continue with that. So I wanted you to be very active in the classroom. Now, let us see that, you know, milk yield is primarily dependent on the quality of a breed in the farm. What are these different breeds? Let us see. Selection of good breed having both high yielding potential combined with resistance to diseases is very important. Resistance to diseases is very important. You cannot take a breed from any part of the country to any part of any other part of the country. No. Those breeds which grow very well in northern India may not uh, may not grow to the same extent in the southern India. So each region have their own type of breed which grow very well there, which yield in the milk also very high in that particular place. Now let us see this. For the yield potential to be realized, the cattle have to be well looked after. You can't expect a cow to cattle to give good milk unless they are fed properly. You don't want to feed them. You don't want to give anything to them. You wanted to leave this cattle, cow, buffalo, etc. on the roadside and you expect them to graze there, browse there, graze there and come back and give, give you a lot of milk and very good quality milk. No, you can't expect. For the yield potential to be realized, sir, or for the cattle to give very good quality milk, they should be looked after very well. They have to be housed well. That means they should be properly, they should be uh, maintained well in a very nicely built uh, cattle shed. Okay, they have to be housed well, should have adequate water, and be maintained disease free. They should get sufficient food. Housed well in the sense, not that simply they are given very good accommodation. They should be given good accommodation, as well as good food, should get uh, sufficient water to drink, and be maintained disease-free. 
they should not suffer from any diseases. The feeding of cattle should be carried out in a systematic manner with a special emphasis on the quality and the quantity of a fodder. What do you mean by fodder? What do you mean by fodder? Fodder is food of cattle. Food of cattle is called fodder. They should be given quality food. They should be given quantity food. That means generally they all these cattle like very, very much fresh green grasses. Right? These, they must be fed with the green, just cut grasses. If you provide them this, or if at all you provide them tender shoots, leaves, etc., they generally give very good quality milk. Okay? So, they should be always provided with the quality food and also how much they want to eat, that much quantity of food should be given. Besides, stringent cleanliness and hygiene. That means, where you are putting them in the cattle shed, you must see that it is very clean and it is hygiene. That uh, both, not only that uh, uh, cattle, even the handlers who are dealing with the cattle, who are going to adder the milk, are of a paramount importance while milking, storage and transport of the milk and its production. So, there should be always a stringent, strict, very well maintained cleanliness and hygienic condition, both on the part of the cattle as well as on the part of the, the handlers. That means, who are dealing with the cattle. Nowadays, of course, much of these processes have become mechanized. You are not going to the milk the cattle by hand. The machines are fixed to the udder. You know, udder is the, uh, uh, the teeth of this cattle, the machine is put there, it shakes and it makes the milk to get oozed out of this uh, uh, teeth. So, nowadays, of course, much of these processes have become mechanized, which reduces the chance of a direct contact of the produce with the handler. I hope it is clear. Understood? Yes, sir. Any doubt? No, sir. Ensuring no. these stringent measures <coughs> would, of course, require regular inspection with the proper record keeping. We must know how much fodder it is put. <clears throat> when we say fodder, you know, not only that uh, the vegetative food, not only that uh, greeneries, not only that the leaves, grasses, etc. are provided to the cattle, even you may be knowing that what you call cake, oil cake, coconut oil cake, groundnut oil cake. You know, these are also provided to them. You should also help to identify and rectify the problems as early as possible. That means we have to maintain the record. We have to see that how much they are fed and when they have consumed, how many calf they have given birth to and what is the gestation period in which a period of gestation they are there, all these, if at all, a strict record is maintained, it helps us to identify and rectify many problems of concern that. Regular visits by a veterinary doctor would be mandatory. There is a veterinary, veterinary doctor, you know, a doctor of cattle is called a veterinary doctor. Not only cattle, of a livestock, veterinary doctor, it is very much required that veterinary doctor visits this uh, uh, cattle shed every now and then. You would probably find it interesting if you have to prepare a questionnaire on diverse aspects of dairy keeping and then follow it up with a visit to a dairy farm in your locality and seek answers to the question after writing neat exam. Okay? One can do that. Right? Now, let us just say additional points. What is that? In 19th century, very, very important, Government of India launched Operation Flood. Always ask a question. In which year Operation Flood got launched? Which resulted in a massive increase in milk and milk products production. Hence, it is called White Revolution in India. My dear students, if at all I say, how much uh, people use to walk to get a quarter liter of milk Prior to 1970, you may really laugh at me. In the whole village, there used to be 
one or two person selling the milk. No people used to sell the milk because they never used to get that much of milk. And even to get a half a half a liter of milk or quarter liter of milk, people were made to move several kilometers to just fetch that much of milk. Where? Prior to 1970. Now you know, the moment you wake up and open your main door, you see the milk sachet falling down at your doorstep. Who is responsible for this? A person by name, Dr. Vargis Kurian, a Malayali. Dr. Vargis Kurian, always you must remember, hats off to this gentleman, he is regarded as father of white revolution in India. Please remember, white revolution in India is, a de is a dealing with the massive production of milk and milk production in India. Always, I'll give the list later, what are the different revolutions and they are concerned with what. So, white revolution is always concerned with the production of, increase of production of milk and milk production. Who is responsible for this? Dr. Vargis Kurian. And Dr. Vargis Kurian is always respected as father of white revolution in India for its great contribution to dairy technology. Shall we see him? Yes, this is Dr. Vargis Kurian. Okay? Okay? He died recently. Right? Now, dairy farm management, a little bit more. Dairy or dairy technology is a scientific maintenance of a milk producing livestock collection and a preservation of milk. Look here, it deals with the maintenance of a milk producing livestock, cattle population, goat population, sheep population, collection and preservation of milk, production of milk products like butter, ghee, cheese, kova, curd, the marketing of milk and its products. Have any one of you heard of this kova? Kova? Hello? Yes, sir. Who is this? Duty. Who said you? Kova? Duty. Sir. Duty, tell me what is, how it is prepared, Duty? Sir, uh, it's prepared by boiling milk. You have to just yeah. keep uh, boiling yeah, milk and in the end product will get it as a... Kova. Kova. Oh, yes, yes. Duty. Are you preparing any sweet out of this? Yes, sir. When you will give it to me? So when I okay. make, I'll give it to Okay. Duty knows how the kova is prepared. What you have to do? You have to put the milk in a vessel and don't switch off that gas and it goes on drying, drying, drying all the water part you operate and finally you will get what is called the solid material that is the kova. It is uh, used in preparation of different types of seeds. Cows and buffaloes are the major milk producing livestock in India. Indian cow belongs to the species Bos indicus and Indian buffalo belongs to what is known as Bos bibelis or bibelis bibelis. Bibelis bibelis are the two distinct species of cattle in India. Indian cow and Indian buffalo. Shall we look into that? Look here. This is what? Indian cow. Bos was indicus, indicus. And this is what you have, the was vibalis, was vibalis. Okay, now, indigenous breeds of cattle. What do you mean by indigenous breed? Indigenous breeds are the breeds that are reared or that occur inside our country. It is the local breed. This is a very important point, always ask a question. Cattle belong to cross mammalia. Order Archaeodactyla and family Bovidae. Remember, they belong to the order Archaeodactyla. Please remember this. And two years back, three years back, they were asked in the AFMT examination, horse belongs to the order. Horse belongs to the order Perisodactyla. P-R-I-S-S-O-D-A-C-T-Y-L-A. Whereas the cattle belongs to the order Archaeodactyla and family Bovidae. These have hollow horns, okay, bovide. All cattle belong to the family bovide. There are two distinct species, as I just said, boss indicus, Indian cow, and boss bivalis or bivalis bivalis. Boss bivalis is also called bivalis bivalis. It is Indian buffalo. And you must know that Indian cow belongs to the race, common race, what is known as jebu. 
it belong to a race called jebu jebu j e and sorry z e b u okay now shall we go ahead right now this is what uh, boss indicates and this is a uh, bibelis bibelis or boss uh, bibelis okay right now a breed is a group of animal related by descent generation after generation that have common characteristics like appearance size shape growth yield etc generally ask a question in the uh, pure board exam what is that what is a breed a breed is a group of animal related by inheritance descent related with each other related by gen related by generation after generation that have common characteristics like appearance size shape growth yield so these breeds are of two types one is what is called the indigenous breed or desi breed or local breed local breed that is the breed found in our place only you can't expect this breed to be present in england you can't expect this to be present in delhi you can't expect this to be present in australia indigenous breed indigenous breed or desi breeds are native breed are local breed they are native to a particular area that are fully acclimatized to their environment and a living condition whatever the breed of cat we have in our place they are very well adapted they are very well acclimatized to live in that particular environment for example if at all you have some cow which is a well acclimatized to coastal belt like udupi mangalore etc if at all you take them to hubli or if at all you take them to davangere and all they feel uh, that little bit more cold when compared to coastal area so they don't get acclimatized it was a problem at the beginning whenever the buffaloes used to get uh, lifted or uh, shifted from that of your chitradurga davangere area shumagere area to coastal area many times they, this buffalo used to die they never used to get acclimatized so an indigenous breed or desi breeds are the native to a particular area that are fully acclimatized to their environment and living condition the indigenous breeds of cattle are classified into three types depending upon their utility so in comparison to an indigenous breed or desi breed we have some breed which we get from foreign countries and they are called exotic breeds exotic breeds are the breeds which we get from other place other than our country exotic breeds so there are two types of breeds in a dairy one is a desi breed also one is a local breed or indigenous breed and another one is a exotic breed exotic breeds are the breeds we get from, which we get from outside of india okay right so this is what i have said about this uh, different uh, uh, breeds now let us look into the another category what is that depending upon their utilization depending upon their use what this particular breed gives us we have the following three categories of breeds milch breed milch breed is the breed where cows are good to milk yielders they give very high quality of milk and good milk what we call milch breed cows are good milkers but bullocks bullocks that is males bulls bullocks bullocks are of poor drought animals drought means the one which are used for work the female that is the cows in this particular breed the cows yield very good milk they are the good milkers but the bullocks are na- not that much good in work you know bullocks never give milk you know that bullocks are not reared for milk bullocks at least they should work you know no they don't work bullocks are of a poor drought drought means work work they are poor draw, drought animals not a drought uh, drought animals examples very good uh, milk breed cow breed always you must know that sindhi sahiwal these are the two indigenous breeds our own breeds it is a local breed it is the indian breed and these two cows are known to yield very good milk high quality milk quantity milk which are they 
Sindhi breed and Sahiwal breed. Am I to buffaloes? Buffalo means a may. Am I to buffaloes? The best breeds are Surti, Mehasana, Murra. Surti, Mehasana, Murra. These are the best buffalo breed. You know, buffalo breed and cow breed, both these are milky breed. They are good in, good in milk, eating milk. Would you like to see them? Okay, let me show you. This is what? Red Sindhi. This is a Sindhi cow. How much milk it is? It is, look into its udder. How big it is the udder? Udder, called in Canada, Ketchalo, udder. And these are the teeth. You know, always you come across four teeth. And these, during the lactation, lactation means right from the day one of giving birth to calf till it uh, lasts giving the milk. So milk yielding period is called a lactation period. Milk yielding period is called lactation. During lactation, that means right from the birth of the calf till it ceases to give the milk. That days lactation, during lactation, it is going to yield about 1,600 kg. 1,600 kg. Even if you think that lactation period is only about 10 months, 10 months, so 300 days, you can expect every day it is giving around 5 kg of milk. 5 kg, approximately 5 liters. Okay, this is a Sindhi cow and this is what you have, Sahiwal. This cow also gives, look here, all the other features you need not bother, but see how much milk, milk it is. It is milk per lactation, it's 1,700 kg. All this milk yield is uh, uh, referred in terms of a lactation period. Milk yield per lactation is 1,700 kg. What are these two breeds? These are the milk breeds. Milk breeds, these I have showed you, this uh, red Cindy and this is a Sahiwal cow. And you have here Surti. Look into the sickle-shaped uh, horn. Sickle-shaped horn. Surti M.A. Surti. And this gives uh, the milk to the extent of 1,800 kg per lactation. Surti. This is also another milk breed. And this is the Mehsana. Look into the again Karud. Karud uh, horn. And it also gives 1,800 kg. And this you see, Mura. It is again the Mura. It gives you, Mehsana gives 1,800, Mura also somewhat O shaped or O shaped one. It is a curve like that. And it also gives 1,800 kg of milk. Okay. So, what we have studied so far is all the milk breed. Now you are looking to draw to breed. Draw to breed is also it's a draft breed. It is also breed for work. So, draw to breed or draft to breed. Cows are poor milkers, but bullocks are good workers. Good uh, draw animals. They have high potentiality to work. The bullocks provide a draw to power for transport and various agriculture operations like flowing, harrowing, thrashing, harvesting, lifting water, etc., etc. All these works they do with a draw to breed or a draft to breed. Best examples for this are cow breed. Which cows? There are some cow. The female cow. Cow is a female. Cows are poor milkers. But their husbands, bullocks, are good, good workers. Cow breed like Hallikar um, Amritmal. These Hallikar and Amritmal, these qualitatively, quantitatively, milk is very less. Cow breed, Hallikar, Amritmal. But their bullocks are good in work. And I'm sure you have seen this Hallikar and Amritmal, but you never knew, oh, this are Hallikar, this Amritmal. Tomorrow, whenever you come across this cow or bullocks, say, hi, how are you? I have heard of you. Yeah, I know that you are Hallikar. I know that you are Amritmal. They are very happy. Let us see that. Here, this is what you have. I'm sure you have seen this Namrata. I'm sure you have seen this Jayasri Kavita. This is what is called Hallikar, a medium-sized one, and this cow eats only 500 kg. Compare this milk lactation with that of your Sindhi, Sahiwal, which used to give around 1,600, 1,700 kg. This gives a 500 kg of milk. But remember, the, female, the cow may give less work, but their husbands, their uh, male counterparts, 
bullocks always so good do very good work and this is what have halikar okay and this is what have amrut mahal look into the pattern of the horn okay see that how the sharp on long horn and uh, that directed upwards at the tip and this is uh, directed inwards okay so this is what have this is amrut mahal amrut mahal also the bullocks are very good in work but uh, but uh, the cows are giving milk a little bit milk but remember even this little bit milk is of a high value okay that's about a drought breed we have studied milk breed we have studied drought breed and now we are looking into we are looking into what is called dual purpose breed it is also known as a general utility breed where cows are good milkers and bullocks are good workers how nice it will be cows are good worker milkers bullocks are good workers they are good in work good in a drought animals examples cow breeds haryana breed ongale breed of andhra and buffalo breed nagpuri elichpuri breed these in these cows and buffalo both they are both cow is a, that is good milker bullock is good worker sheep buffalo is good milker he buffalo is good worker so shall we see that this is what you have haryana breed and it gives 900 kg not as low as 500 kg as you see in case of amritmal halikar not as high as you see in red sindhi and it is average 900 kg and this is what angale breed nellor again 700 kg both uh, cows are good milkers and uh, bullocks are good workers or he buffalo is good worker okay so this is what i am summarizing you now look here important cow breed sindhi breed milk breed from punjab sahiwal breed milk breed from punjab and they give the milk to the extent of 1600 1700 kg now you see this is what a halikar amritmal drought purpose drought purpose here the cow gives you less milk amritmal cow gives less milk but uh, there are bullocks they give they are very good in work in uh, uh, plowing plowing is that uh, what you call ulume kute that is uh, preparing the ground for uh, the sowing purpose and all thrashing it all so in that they are all good and this is what you have angale breed dual purpose breed so they give the milk to the extent 700 kg haryana breed dual purpose breed and it gives you kg 900 kg of milk so this is with the to buffalo surti mehsana murra all these are milk purpose milk breeds and they give the milk to the extent of 1800 kg per about 10 months even if it all the thing okay 100 kg 180 kg per month 6 kg per week per day okay this is nagpur breed dual purpose breed 1800 kg right so now one minute hello are you hearing me are you hearing me yes sir yes sir is it interesting or boring yes sir oh no voice Hello. 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 What do you say, Jayasri? Is it boring? No, sir. No, sir. Interesting. Yes, sir. To so please me, you are telling interesting. Have you whether you have heard about all these things before? No, sir. No. Right. Navya. Janani, yes sir. Have you understood? Yes sir. Lohit, yes sir. Hello, Vishwita, yes sir. Now you tell me who like to answer my question. Raise your hand, sir. I will answer. No problem. You can look into whatever you have taken on. I will not ask a very difficult question. Come on, come on. Raise your hand. Come on, who has raised the hand? Okay, Rafa, very good. Rafa, yes, Vishmita, Kavi. Okay, okay, okay. Rafa, 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 Rafa. Can you yes, name? Sir. Can you name any milk breed? Cow. Sahiwal, Sindhi. Sindhi, very good. Okay, 
Kavi, can you can you name any dual purpose breed? Dual purpose breed. Kavi, Kavita. Um, Halikar. Halikar Amrit. and Amrit Mahal. Amrit Mahal. Okay. Okay. Namrata. Namrata. Yes, sir. Namrata. What do you mean by Desi breed? Desi breed. Desi breed. The local breed, sir. Local breed. Vishwita. 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 Yes, yes, sir. Can you, can you name any one of this uh, buffalo which is uh, known to eat high milk? Milk breed. Pardon? Surti. Buffalo. Buffalo. Ah, Surti. Very good. Mura. Mehsana. This road. Okay. Now, only these many students are raised and I should, uh, if I don't ask the question, Aisha will feel unhappy. Aisha. 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 Yes, Aisha. sir. Shall I ask you one question? Yes, yes sir. Or no? Yes? Okay. Uh, what are the three important breeds based on the utility? Utility? Three categories of breeds based on utility. Their utilization. What are the three categories? Can you recall? Aisha? Can you recall Blissy? Canisa? Anyone? Charan? Chinmay? Can you recall any of this breed based on their utilization? Hello? Milk breed. Hello? Nadira, tell me. Yes, sir. Milk breed. Huh? Dark breed. Yeah. And DL. Milk breed, dot breed, and dual purpose breed. Dual okay. purpose breed. So, yeah. So I hope it is clear. Shall I go ahead? Shall I go ahead? Right. Now I am taking another one. What is known as uh, that of uh, exotic breed. High yielding exotic breeds of cattle. Exotic breeds are those that are imported from foreign countries, not our breed. They are imported from foreign countries. Exotic breeds of milch cattle have been introduced in India for rearing and crossbreeding in an attempt to improve the average milk yield. We get some cattle from outside India and we cross them with the local breed and we get hybrid. They are crossed with local breed. And these are actually called exotic breed. Whatever exotic breed you have, they are not 100% pure exotic breed. Some of the popular European breeds of cattle imported and reared in India are, you must know these four, very important, horse temptation, Jersey, Red Dane, Brown Swiss. These are the European cattle, European cattle, and these are belong to the, uh, belong to the race, Taurus. Have any one of you seen this? Horse impression, what is called HF? Jersey, Red Dane, Brown Swiss. Hello? Have any one of you heard this exotic breed? Canisa? No, sir. No. Namrata? No, sir. Prithvi? I only saw this Jersey, sir. Red, uh, that uh, Rakesh, I am sure, Pratwe, no, I am sure most of you have seen that. You have seen Gurta Hede Paricha Hilla. Oh, Yaro Brutina Parta, Gurta Hede Hokta Paricha Hilla. Our history and Gotilla. Our Yen Martha Gotilla. You have seen them. I will show you them. Okay, so now let us look into the first one. Host in Christian, which is commonly called HF, HF, HF. This is the most important breed known to give highest yield in the world. It is a native of Holland. It is the best milk breed of cattle in the world. The milk yield is about 6,500 liters per lactation period. How much, Navya? 
How much in a year? Six thousand five hundred liters. If at all you compare with the days our local bread and add both milk and urine together, milk and urine together, our cow will not give this much of milk. So milk yield is about six thousand five hundred liters per lactation period. Milk contains a three percent fat. That is the way it has a heavy body with a black and white color marking. Hi, Navya, Kanisha, Blessy, Aisha, Namrata, yes, Vicky. Sir. Have you not seen this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They are there in Manipal also. Navya, Siddesh. Pratvi, Rakesh, Jyoti, yes, 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 Kavita, yes. have you not seen this? Have you not yes, seen sir. it? Yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Then that's what I said. You have seen, but you don't. You have not recognized. It. From tomorrow onwards, say hi. They are not harm you. They are not hit you. They are very cool. Going on the road slowly, you have to stop your uh, two wheeler to get the way to go. They are cool. They move because of the big order. I am sure. Can you sir? Have you not seen this? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, you have seen. And they are plenty. This is the breed which is known to eat highest milk. Okay, our temperature, Jersey, Pratvi, your cow. It is a native cow of the island of Jersey in England, English Channel. The milk yield is about four thousand liters per lactation period. Milk contains four point five percent fat. So even the milk yield is less, the fat yield is more. People therefore put a little bit of water and make it a four thousand to six thousand liter. It has a medium-sized brown-colored body with or without white marking. Have you not seen this? Jersey, Navya, Namrata. Jyoti, have not seen. Yes, yeah. So these horse temperature and this jersey are very common. You do come across in almost everywhere. And this is what have Red Dane is a native of Denmark. The milk yield is about six thousand liters per lactation. Milk contains four percent fat. It is a very body, heavy body, but has slightly smaller than horse temperature. Just to know the name of this Red Dane. And this is brown swiss, the cow from Switzerland. Milk yield is about five thousand liters per milk lactation. Milk contains four percent fat, and this is how it looks like. So these so four are exotic breeds which we get, which we got from foreign countries outside India, and uh, they are cross bred with the local breed, and uh, we are having their generation now. None of them are hundred percent of pure breed what you see in India. They are uh, cross with the local breeds. Apart from milk and its products, cattle provide a means of transport: biogas, organic manure, gelatin, leather. You know, if at all you are eating ice cream, in the ice cream invariably this is gelatin, cattle gelatin is used. So be careful to say that I am strictly herbivore. I am strictly vegetarian. The skin of livestock can be processed to get a leather. The skin of cow is called kips, and that of buffalo is called bucks. And these are used in a men in a preparing these are drums and all. So now let us take up poultry farm management, right? Is it clear? Any doubt anywhere? Anyone? Do you have any doubt? Lohit? Hello? Okay. Shall we move? Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes. Now let us look into poultry farm management. Poultry is a cause of domesticated fowl, birds used for food or for their eggs. They typically include chicken and ducks and sometimes a turkey and geese. The word poultry is often used to refer to the meat of only these birds, generally chicken, ducks, turkey, geese. But in a more general sense, it may refer to the meat of other birds also. As in dairy farming, selection of disease-free and suitable breed, proper and safe farm condition, Proper feed and water, hygiene and health, or care, health care are more important components of poultry farm management. Yes, 
You may have seen a TV news or the red newspaper reports about the bird flu virus, which created a scare in the country and drastically affected egg and chicken consumption. Okay, let us look into them more about that. Poultry farm management. Poultry is a rearing of a domesticated fowl, chicken, ducks, geese, turkeys, pheasants for their eggs and meat. Domestic fowl belongs to the species Gallus domesticus. Please remember, whatever the fowl you have back at your villages, it belongs to the genus Gallus species domesticus. It is the most commonly reared poultry bird. See here, we can see who is this? Cock. And this is a hen. Hen. Husband and wife. Okay? Now, this is domesticated chicken. Right? Now, Gallus domesticus. Poultry keeper has to select a good breed. There are different breeds for raising eggs and meat. Just like a cow, some breed for milk, some breed for work. Here also, there are certain breeds. They are raised for eggs, certain breeds for meat, certain breeds for both eggs and meat. There are different types of indigenous, local breed, desi breed, and exotic pause for getting eggs, meat, or both eggs and meat. Look here. What is called layers? Please remember, these are the birds reared for egg. Layers, these breeds are good egg layers. Layers are the birds which are reared for eggs. They lay about 180 to 250 larger sized eggs in a year. They are early to mature and start laying eggs from sixth month itself. Early to mature. We want to the we want to the layers to mature early so that they start laying the eggs. And they lay about 180 to 250 large sized eggs. Our local bird may yield about 60 eggs in a year. But this yield 180 to 250 large sized eggs, large sized, so that they can prepare very big omelet. Okay. And right from the sixth month, they start laying eggs. And best example for layer is white legor. Best layer in the whole world. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Yes, sir. Have you seen a uh, white leghorn? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. How is it? White in color. White sir. in color. White leghorn, bat layer, and minorca. Both are Mediterranean breeds. Let us see that. Please. This is white leghorn. Couple. Male and female. Okay. Calling a Navya. Okay. So. White leg on. This is Minorca. Cockerel. Cockerel means a male. Cock. Cockerel. Young one. So Minorca hen. Right? So now let us look into the next one. Broilers. If the layers are reared for egg, broilers are reared for meat. These are also called table birds. These breeds are reared for meat. Meat is a soft and has high quality protein, low fat content. These breeds are efficient feed converter. Whatever they eat, they convert it into meat. So whatever you give them to eat, it results in meat so that we can enjoy the meat. As these breeds are efficient feed converter and grow fast. And best example for broiler, a seal, basra, both are our local breeds, Indian breeds. Plymouth Rock, American breed, USA, Sussex, English breed. So, shall we look into that? This is a seal. You know, this a seal is always used in a cock fighting. Have you heard about cock fighting? Canisa? Canisa? Cock fighting? Have you heard about? Vishwita? Yes, sir. Vishwita? Yes, sir. Cock fighting, yes, sir. Uh, have you heard? Yes, sir. What is it? <laughs> sir, fighting of cocks. Fighting of cocks, I know. Where you see? Sir, in our place, it's common. Ah, that is why I asked you, Vismita. You know, my dear students, Vismita and myself, we come from the same place. Her place is just 2-3 kilometers from my native place. In our native places, people use this 
they form two group and they tie one razor to the leg here they tie a razor 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 to the leg and then allow them the two cock to fight with each other the one which hurts the other one which hurts the other one and makes the other one to fall down is considered victorious and later there will lot of a bet on this um, the two of the cock and losers have to pay, pay all the money to the winners there will be bet okay this is the one which is used in cock fighting asil and this basra both are indigenous breeds and this is primatrock this is uh, the exotic breed exotic breed from usa such as so this is such exotic breed from land now let us look into what is known as a dual purpose breed these breeds are raised for both eggs and meat just as we seen layers are for uh, eggs and which are for the meat which is for the meat nadira which one is for the meat what do you call that nadira nadira broiler broiler not a boiler huh? not a boiler broiler okay broiler for the meat now we have dual purpose breed hey, these breeds are re- raised for both eggs and meat females give eggs and males give meat example chittagong gagas kadaknath all are desi breeds local breeds rhode island new hampshire both are american breeds we also have cornish english breed and giri raja always you must remember giri raja giri raja is a breed developed in our agriculture science university bangalore it is our breed giri raja giri raja breed was developed by crossing white leghorn local varieties of white leghorn and cornish breed cornish breed is a english breed our uh, poultry department in agriculture institute hebbal bangalore they have developed i think you may be interested to see them chitgong kadaknath rhode island red new hampshire rooster new hampshire rooster again rooster is also cock and cornish and this is what giri raja with the giri rani have you seen this isvita yes sir have you seen this no sir no kanisha no sir blessy ah uh, yes sir my grandma yeah. had in her home yeah it is that that is why i asked you people and it's very much there in uh, south kind i know kanisha you ask your dad or mom i would like to see giri raja tell your mom or dad to introduce uh, them to you or to introduce you to them yes blessy. sir blessy yes sir it, there, it walks very gently nicely you can see that very good look gigantic gesture gigantic look very lovely gesture okay okay apart from the selection of the breed poultry keeper has to keep a record of rate of egg production rate of growth of chicken number of good egg layers slow egg layers fast growing and slow growing chicken etc etc you know generally in the farm poultry farm what a poultry farm what is done the weaker one non predict one sick one are mercilessly they are removed and this is what is called culling so one has to weed out the non predictive and sick birds this no is kali a good quality and required quantity of food should be given to the birds the feed should contain essential nutrients such as carbohydrates proteins fats minerals vitamins like that now let me just hurriedly pass through the other thing now you know that uh, what your the in the poultry farm you see always they go for what is called db king you know generally the power in poultry they so cocks or hens they fight with each other to avoid fighting with the beak they hurt with the beak generally generally debeaking is done when they are about a 3 or 4 week old debeaking is holding the beak to the electric current and cutting the beak so debeaking removing upper one third of the mandible okay that is what is called dbk i shall show you this is a dbk part can you see that can you see that see see here little bit of little bit is cut here 
So they cannot uh, bite. They cannot uh, hurt anything. It is just holding. You know, in uh, this, uh, some of the shops, Sidesh, Pratwe, have you seen that in some of the shops there will be a cigarette lighter? Just to hold the cigarette to that and get uh, it burnt? Pratwe, have you seen yes, that? Sir. No, yeah? sir. No? no, sir. Sidesh, have you seen that? No, sir. Huh? Huh? No, sir. No? <laughs> You know, if it only you say yes, what will be my other question? Prati? What will be my another question? Okay. So, no, good. So, this is what? The poetry housing can be semi-intensive system, intensive system. This is what you see. Semi-intensive system, okay. And intensive system, birds are rarely in cages. Look here. These are some cages, right? I will not go into details of that. These are all different properties that you should know about it. And many times we do what is known as the maintenance in courts. They get because uh, the comb, wattle are all not required. So in order to see that all the energy is put uh, into meat only, the maintenance of this uh, um, the poetry includes feeding, lighting, debeaking, dubbing, and brailing. What is this dubbing? See, dubbing is cutting this. Uh, Tire. What? What do you see there? The being comb and wattle. Removing the comb. Down below is the wattle. Because it is not required. So cruelty. Unnecessary that organ should not get a deposited fat, you know. All should get into the meat only because none of them are going to eat these parts. And this is what is called brailing, cutting the wings. That much torches you onto this. So you must know this is what mm -hmm. some of the diseases always uh, ask in the examination. Some of the important diseases include foul fox, Rani Ketu disease, the most important disease. It is also called a Newcastle disease. Always asked question. Rani Ketu disease is found in one poultry or the cattle or this uh, camel or something at a uh, sheep like that. So it is the disease of this uh, foul, viral arthritis. Yeah, it is arthritis, infectious bronchitis, foul cholera, choriza, salmonellosis. These are all different diseases of the cat. There are also parasitic diseases caused by roundworm, tapeworm, foul mites, chicken mites, fleas, ticks, lice, etc. So the, uh, the foul are not free from parasitic disease. Even you do come across different parasitic diseases also. So you must know that the eggs are valuable for the richest source of easy digestible high quality animal protein. You must uh, consume egg, not in the form of egg omelette. No, not like that. You must uh, take an egg, cut open the shell, you make one hole and put uh, directly the yolk into your uh, mouth. That is what uh, raw egg. I am not telling advocating you to eat uh, um, poultry that uh, uh, egg in the form of uh, this omelette. You must always either eat uh, raw egg if first it's difficult, then go for boiled egg, but never this uh, omelette. The moment you prepare omelette, all the quality, all the uh, proteins, whatever that is there, essential for your body, uh, they get uh, heat denatured. They contain all essential amino acids required to promote growth and health. Hence, they are extremely useful in combating protein malnutrition. Okay, therefore it is fine. Now, let us look into the... Now, this is what eggs have. Please remember, they have the vitamin A, D, A, E, B, B2, etc. So, eating egg is good. Uh, once in a while, of course, I am not advocating that you must eat uh, egg. Of course, there are substitutes for the egg also. But those who can eat, those who can afford for that, we can go for that. So, that's all about this. And I will be continuing this part, animal breeding, in my tomorrow's class, the rest of the thing.